Hello friends, happy Thursday. Continuing with Act 4 of Titus Andronicus. The story so far, how much do we need to know? Horrible, horrible things have happened to the family of Titus Andronicus, which is now reduced to Titus, his brother Marcus, Titus's daughter Lavinia, who is now missing her tongue and her hands, and Titus's grandson, Lucius, the elder Lucius, Titus' son, has been banished for trying to rescue his brothers who were being executed, having been framed for the murder of Lavinia's husband, Bassianus. On the advice of Titus, older Lucius, in his banishment, has joined up with the Goths in Syria to form a, well, there's another way of putting it, a rebel alliance to defeat the emperor. Yesterday, when I talked about tropes from this play that still survived, I was referring to the idea of the old soldier who's been pushed too far and has now steeled himself, which is what happened in the last act. However, Titus having steeled himself, appears to have completely lost his mind. Probably didn't help that he was persuaded to chop off his own hand to uh, save his son's life, and that just turned out to be a massive practical joke played by Aaron. In the Roman court, we have the Emperor Saturninus, his wife Tamara, formerly the Queen of the Goths, her sons, Chiron and Demetrius, and also her lover, Aaron, who has a lot to do in this act, so there will be more racist abuse meted out against him to warn you about that. Anything else you should know? Dam means mother. It's just a word that comes up a lot. So when people talk about the dam, they mean the mother. A clown enters. Now, a, a clown obviously doesn't mean... <laughs> or even a jester. Basically, it means the, the part you would give a clown. So, I, like Lee Evans in The Fifth Element, or David Schneider in Mission Impossible. And there is a line missing from this act. Now, when I've seen productions uh, on the television, they just cut this line. But I think that gives a false impression that Marcus is advising his cousins to actually leave Rome and join the Rebel Alliance in the Goths. And I think he's actually just telling them that Lucius is forming one. So I'll, I'll use some static to cover that line rather than cut it completely. I think we get through... No, I was going to say, I think we get through the whole act without any deaths. There are actually two deaths. See if you can guess who's going to die before the end of the act. Enjoy. Act 4, scene 1. Enter Lucius's son and Lavinia running after him, and the boy flies from her with his books under his arm. Enter... Titus and Marcus. Help, grandsire, help! My Aunt Lavinia follows me everywhere. I know not why. Good Uncle Marcus, see how swift she comes. Yes, sweet aunt, I know not what you mean. He drops his books. Stand by me, Lucius. Do not fear thine aunt. She loves thee, boy, too well to do thee harm. Aye, when my father was in Rome, she did. What means my niece Lavinia by these signs? Fear her not, Lucius. Somewhat doth she mean. See, Lucius, see how much she makes of thee. Some whither would she have thee go with her? Ah, boy, Cornelia never with more care read to her sons than she hath read to thee, sweet poetry in Tully's orator. Canst thou not guess wherefore she plies thee thus? My lord, I know not, I, nor can I guess, unless some fit or frenzy do possess her, for I have heard my grandsire say full oft, extremity of griefs would make men mad, and I have read that Hecuba of Troy ran mad for sorrow, what that may be to fear, although, my lord, I know my noble aunt loves me as dear as e'er my mother did, and would not but in fury fright my youth, which made me down to throw my books and fly, causeless, perhaps, but pardon me, sweet aunt and madam, if my uncle Marcus go, I will most willingly attend your ladyship. Lucius, I will. Lavinia turns the books over with her stumps. How now, Lavinia? Marcus, what means this? Some book there is that she desires to see? Which is it, girl, of these? Open them, boy. Oh, but thou art deeper read and better skilled. Come and take choice of all my library, and so beguile thy sorrow till the heavens reveal the damned contriver of this deed. Why lifts she up her arms in sequence thus? I think she means that there were more than one confederate in the act. Aye, more there was, or else to heaven she heaves him for revenge. Lucius, what book is that she tosseth so? Glanciatus Ovid's Metamorphoses. My mother gave it me. For love of her that's gone, perhaps she culled it from among the rest. So, so busily she turned the leaves. Help her. What would she find? Lavinia, shall I read? This is the tragic tale of Philomel, and treats of Tyrius treason and his rape, and rape, I fear, was root of thy annoy. See, brother, see, note how she quotes the leaves. Lavinia, wert thou thus surprised, sweet girl, ravished and wronged as Philomela was, forced in the ruthless, vast and gloomy woods? See, see, aye, such a place there is where we did hunt. Oh, had we never, never hunted there! 
patterned by that the poet here describes, by nature made for murders and for rapes. Oh, why should nature build so foul a den unless the gods delight in tragedies? Give signs, Fico. For here are none but friends. What Roman lord it was durst do the deed? Or slunk not Saturnine, as Turquin erst, that left the camp to sit in Lucre's bed? Can you sit down, sweet niece, brother? Sit down by me. Apollo, Pallas, Jove, for Mercury, inspire me! That I may this treason find. My lord. Look here. Look here, Lavinia. This sandy plot is plain. Guide, if thou canst, this after me. He writes his name with his staff and guides it with feet and mouth. I have here writ my name without the help of any hand at all. Cursed be that heart that forced us to a shift. Write thou, good niece, and here display at last what God will have discovered for revenge. Heaven guide thy pen to print thy sorrows plain that we may know the traitors and the truth. She takes the staff in her mouth and guides it with her stumps and writes. Oh, do you read, my lord, what she hath writ? Iron. The lustful sons of Tamara performers of this heinous bloody deed. Magni dominato polli, tam lentus audis scarara, tam lentus fides. O oh, calm ye, gentle lord, although I know there is enough written upon this earth to stir a mutiny in the mildest thoughts and arm the minds of infants to exclaims, my lord, kneel down with me, Lavinia, kneel, and kneel, sweet boy, and Roman Hector's hope, all kneel, and swear with me, as with the woeful fear and father of that chaste, dishonoured dame, Lord Junius Brutus swear for Lucrece rape, that we will prosecute by good advice mortal revenge upon these traitorous Goths and see their blood or die with this reproach. They rise. Hmm. Tis sure enough, and you knew how. But if you hunt these bear whelps, then beware. The dam will wake, and if she wind ye once, she's with a lion deeply still in league and lulls him whilst she playeth on her back, and when he sleeps... Will she do what she list? You're a young huntsman, Marcus. Leave alone and come. I will go get a leaf of brass and with a gad of steel will write these words and lay it by. The angry northern wind will blow these sands like Sibyl's leaves abroad. And where's our lesson then? Boy, what say you? I say, my lord, that if I were a man, their mother's bedchamber should not be safe for these base bondmen to the yoke of Rome. Aye, that's my boy. Thy father hath full oft for this ungrateful country done the like, and, uncle, so will I, and if I live. Come, go with me into mine armory, Lucius, I'll fit thee, and with all my boys shall carry from me to the emperor's sons presents, that I intend to send them both. Come, come, thou do my message, would thou not? I, with my dagger in their bosom, grandsire. No, no, boy, not so. I'll teach thee another course. Lavinia, come. Marcus, look to my house. Lucius and I'll go brave it at the court. Aye, right, many, will we, sir? And we'll be waited on. Excellent all, but Marcus. Oh, heaven. Can you hear a good man groan and not relent, and not compassion him? Marcus, attend him in his ecstasy that hath more scars of sorrow in his heart than foeman's marks upon his battered shield, but yet so just that he will not revenge. Revenge the heavens! For old Andronicus. Exit. Scene two. Enter Aaron, Chiron and Demetrius at one door, and at the other door young Lucius and another with a bundle of weapons and verses writ upon them. Demetrius, here's the son of Lucius. He has some message to deliver us. Ah, oh, some mad message from his mad grandfather. My lords, with all the humbleness I may, I greet your honours from Andronicus. And pray the Roman gods confound you both. Gramercy, oh, lovely Lucius, what's the news? That you are both deciphered, that's the news, for villains marked with rape. May it please you, my grandsire, well advised, hath sent by me the goodliest weapons of his armoury to gratify your honourable youth, the hope of Rome, for so he bid me say. His attendant gives the weapons, and so I do, and with his gifts present your lordships that, whenever you may have need, 
You may be armed and appointed well. And so I leave you both like bloody villains. Exit with attendant. Oh, what's here? A scroll and written round about, let's see. Integia vitae, scelera square purus, non eget mauri jaculus, nec arcu. Oh, tis a verse in Horace. I knew it well. Uh, I read it in a grammar long ago. Ah, oh, just a verse in Horace. Uh, right, you have it. Now, what a thing it is to be an ass. It is no sound jest. That old man hath found their guilt and sends them weapons wrapped about with lines that wound beyond their feeling to the quick. But were our witty empress well afoot, she would applaud Andronicus' conceit. But let her rest in her unrest a while. And now, young lords, were not a happy star led us to Rome, strangers, and more than so captives, to be advanced to this height? It did me good before the palace gate to brave the tribute in his brother's bearing, but me more good to see so great a lord basely insinuate and send us gifts. Why had he not reason, Lord Demetrius? Did you not use his daughter very friendly? (laughs) Ah, would we had a thousand Roman dames at such a bee, but turned to serve our lust, a charitable wish, and full of love. He lacks but your mother for to say amen, and would she for twenty thousand more? Come, let us go and pray to all the gods for our beloved mother in her pains. Well, pray to the devils, the gods have given us over. Trumpet sound. Why the emperor's trumpets flourished us? But like for joy, the emperor hath a son. So, who comes here? Enter nurse with child. Good morrow, lords. Ow! Tell me, did you see Aaron the moor? Well, more or less, or near away at all. Here Aaron is. And what with Aaron now? Oh! Gentle Aaron, we are all undone! Now help or woe betide thee evermore! Why, how? What catawalling dost thou keep? What dost thou wrap and fumble in thy arms? Oh, that which I would hide from heaven's eyes! Our empress' shame and stately Rome's disgrace! She is delivered, Lord, she is delivered! To whom? I mean, she brought a bed! Well, God give her good rest! What has she sent here? A devil! Why, then, she is the devil's dam! It's a joyful issue! A joyless, dismal! Black and sorrowful issue. Here is the babe, as loathsome as a toad amongst the fair-faced breeders of our clime. The Empress sends it thee, thy stamp, thy seal, and bids thee christen it with thy dagger's point. Should see your is black so base a hue, sweet blouse. You're a beauteous blossom, sure. Dimphilin, what hast thou done? That which thou canst not undo. Thou hast undone our mother. Villain, I've done thy mother. And there in hellish dog thou hast undone her. Woe to her chance and damned her lawless choice. A curse the offspring of so foul a fiend. It shall not live. It shall not die. Aaron, it must. The mother wills it so. What must it, nurse? Then let no man but I do execution on my flesh and blood. I'll broach the tadpole on my reaper's point. Thus give it me. My sword shall soon dispatch it. Sooner this sword shall plow thy bowels up. Aaron takes the child and draws his sword. Stay, murderous villains! Will you kill your brother? Now by the burning tapers of the sky that shone so brightly when this boy was got, he dies upon my scimitar's sharp point that touches this, my firstborn son and heir! I tell you, younglings, not Enceladus with all his threatening band of Typhon's brood, nor great outside his, nor the god of war, shall seize this prey out of his father's hands. What, what? Ye sanguine, shallow-hearted boys! Ye white-limed walls! Ye alehouse painted signs! Coal black is better than another hue, in that it scorns to bear another hue, for all the water in the ocean can never turn the swan's black legs to white, although she lave them hourly in the flood. Tell the empress from me, I am of age to keep mine own, excuse it how she can. Wilt thou betray thy noble mistress thus? My mistress is my mistress, this myself. The figure and the picture of my youth. This before all the world do I prefer. This Margaret all the world will I keep safe. 
or some of you shall smoke for it in Rome. By this our mother is forever shamed. Rommel will space her for this foul escape. The emperor in his rage will doom her death. I blush to think upon this ignominy. Why there's the privilege your beauty bears, a treacherous hue that will betray with blushing the close enacts and counsels of thy heart. Here's a young lad friend of another Lear. Now, <laughs> look how the black slave smiles upon the father, as who should say, Old lad, I'm thine own. He's your brother, lords, sensibly fed of that self-blood that first gave life to you, and from that womb where you in prison were, he is enfranchised and come to a light. Nay, he is your brother by the surer side, although my seal be stamped in his face. Aaron, what should I say unto the empress? Advise thee, Aaron, what is to be done, and we will all subscribe to thy advice. Save thou the child, so me we all be safe. Well, sit we down, and let us all consult. My son and I will have the wind of you. Keep there, now, talk a pleasure of your safety. How many women saw this child of his? Why so, brave lords? When we do join in league, I am a lamb. But if you brave the more, <laughs> the chafed boar, the mounted lioness. The ocean swells not so as air and storms. But say again, how many saw the child? Cornelia the midwife and myself and no one else but the delivered empress. The empress, the midwife and yourself. Two may keep counsel when the third's away. Right, go to the empress and tell her this I said. <coughs> he kills her. <coughs> oh, so cries a pig prepared to the spit. What means so, Aaron? Wherefore didst thou this? Oh, Lord, sir, tis a deed of policy. Shall she live to betray this guilt of ours? A long time babbling gossip? No, lords, no. And now be it known to you my full intent. Not far. When Muliteus, my countryman, his wife, but yesternight was brought to bed, his child is like to her, fair as you are. Go pack with him and give the mother gold and tell them both the circumstance of all and how by this their child shall be advanced and be received for the emperor's heir and substituted in the place of mine to calm this tempest whirling in the court and let the emperor dandle him for his own. Harky, lords, <laughs> you see, I've given her physic. And you must needs bestow her funeral. The fields are near, and your gallant grooms. This done, see that you take no longer days, but send the midwife presently to me. The midwife and the nurse well made away, then let the ladies tattle what they please. Erin, I see thou wilt not test the air with secrets, for this care of Tamara herself and hers are highly bound to thee. Excellent Chiron and Demetrius for the nurse's body. Now to the Goths. The swifter swallow flies, there to dispose this treasure in mine arms, and secretly to greet the Empress's friends. Come on, you thick-lipped slave, I'll bear you hence. For it is you that puts us to the shifts. I'll make you feed on berries and on roots, and fat on curds and whey, and suck the goat, and cabin in a cave, and bring you up to be a warrior, and command a camp. Exit with his child. Scene three. Enter Titus, old Marcus, Marcus's son Publius, who I don't think we've met before, young Lucius, and other gentlemen, Sempronius Caius, with bows, and Titus bears the arrows, with letters on the ends of them. Come, Marcus, come, Kinsman, this is the way. Sir boy, let me see your archery. Look, ye draw home enough. Tis there straight, terras astrea, reliquit. Of you, you remembered, Marcus, she's gone. She's fled. Sirs, take you to your tools. You, cousins, shall go round the ocean and cast your nets. Haply you may catch her in the sea. Yet there's as little justice as at land. Uh, no, Publius and Sempronius, you must do it. Tis you must dig with mattock and with spade and pierce the inmost centre of the earth. Then, when you come to Pluto's region, I pray you, deliver him this petition. Tell him it is for justice and for aid, and that it comes from old Andronicus, shaken with sorrows in ungrateful Rome. Room. Well, well, I made thee miserable. What time I threw the people's suffrages on him, that thus doth tyrannise o'er me. Go, get you gone, and pray be careful all, and leave you not a man of war unsearched. This wicked emperor may have shipped her heads, and kinsmen, well, then we may go pipe for justice. Marcus, O oh, Publius, is not this a heavy case, to see thy noble uncle thus distraught? Therefore, my lords, it highly us concerns by day and night to attend him carefully and feed his humour kindly as we may till time beget some careful remedy. Kinsman, his sorrows are past remedy. But...
join with the Goths and with revengeful war, take recon Rome for this ingratitude and vengeance on the traitor Saturnine. Publius, how now? How now, my masters? What, have you met with her? Publius, uh, no, my good lord, but Pluto sends word, if you will have revenge from hell, you shall marry for justice. She is now employed, he thinks, with Jove in heaven or somewhere else, so that perforce you must need stay a time. He doth be wrong to feed me with delays. I'll dive into the burning lake below and pull her out for Vacheron by the heels, Marcus. I mean, we are but shrubs, no cedars we, no big-boned men framed of the cyclops' size, but metal, Marcus, steel to their very back, yet wrung with wrongs more than our backs can bear. And sith there's no justice in earth nor hell, we will solicit heaven and move the gods to send down justice for to wreak our wrongs. Come to this gear. You're a good archer, Marcus. He gives them the arrows. Ad Jovum, that's for you here. Ad Apollinum, ad Martum, uh, that's for myself. Here, boy, to Pallas, here to Mercury, to Saturn, Caius, not to Saturnine. <laughs> you were as good to shoot against the wind. To it, boy, Marcus, loose when I bid. Of my word I've written to effect, there's not a god left unsolicited. Kinsman, shoot all your shafts into the court. We will afflict the emperor in his pride. Now, masters, draw! They shoot. Ah, oh, well said, Lucius. <laughs> Good boy. In Virgo's lap. <laughs> Give it, Pallas. My lord, I am a mile beyond the moon. Your letter is with Jupiter by this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Publius, Publius, oh, what hast thou done? See, see, <laughs> thou hast shot off one of Taurus's horns. Oh, this was the sport, my lord, when Publius shot, the bull being galled, gave Ares such a knock that down fell both the ram's horns in the court. And who should find them but the empress villain? Well, she laughed and told the boar he should not choose but give them to his master for a present. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, 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 there it goes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God give his lordship joy. Enter the clown with a basket and two pigeons in it. <laughs> News! News from heaven! Marcus, the post is come. Sirrah, what tidings? Have you any letters? Shall I have justice? What says Jupiter? Uh, uh, oh, the gibbet maker. Um, he says that he hath taken them down again, for the man must not be hanged till the next week. No, but what says Jupiter? I ask thee. Uh, alas, sir, I know not Jupiter. I never drunk with him in all my life. Why, villain, art thou not the carrier? I, of my pigeons, sir. Uh, nothing else. What? Didst thou not come from heaven? From heaven, alas, sir, I, I never came there. God forbid I should be so bold to press to heaven in my young days. Why, I am going with my pigeons to the tribunal plebs to take up a matter of brawl betwixt my uncle and one of the emperor's men. Sheila, come here. Make no more ado, but give the pigeons to the emperor. By me thou shalt have justice at his hands. Hold, hold. Uh, meanwhile, his money for thy charges. He gives money. Give me pen and ink. Sirrah, can you with a grace deliver up a supplication? Aye, sir. Titus, writing and giving the clown a paper. Then here is a supplication for you. And when you come to him at the first approach, you must kneel, then kiss his foot, then deliver up your pigeons, and then look for your reward. I'll be at hand, sir. See you do it bravely. I warrant you, sir. Let me alone. Sirrah, has our knife? Come, let me see it. Uh, oh, yeah, here, Marcus, fold it in the oration, for thou hast made it like an humble suppliant, and when thou hast given it to the emperor, knock at my door, tell me what he says. God be with you, sir, I will. Exit. Come, Marcus, let us go. Publius, follow me. Exeunt. Scene four. Enter Saturninus, the emperor, and Tamara, the empress, and Chiron and Demetrius, her two sons, and others. The emperor brings the arrows in his hand that Titus shot at him. What? <laughs> Lords, what wrongs are these? Was ever seen an emperor in Rome thus overborne, troubled, confronted thus, and for the extent of eagle justice used in such contempt? My lords, you know, as do the rightful gods, however these disturbers of our peace buzz in the people's ears, their naught hath passed, but even with law against the willful sons of old Andronicus. And what and if his sorrows have so overwhelmed his wits? Shall we be thus affected in his reeks, his fits, his frenzy, and his bitterness? And now he writes to heaven for his redress. See, here's to Jove, this to Mercury, this to Apollo, this to the god of war. Sweet scrolls to fly about the streets of Rome. 
What's this but libelling against the Senate and blazoning our injustice everywhere? No goodly humour, is it not, my lords? As who would say in Rome, no justice were. But if I live, his feigned ecstasies shall be no shelter to these outrages. But he and his shall know that justice lives in Saturninus' health, whom, if he sleep, he'll so awake as he in fury shall cut off the proud conspirator that lives. My gracious lord, my lovely Saturnine, lord of my life, commander of my thoughts, Calm thee, and bear the faults of Titus' age, the effects of sorrow for his valiant sons, whose loss hath pierced him deep and scarred his heart, and rather comfort his distressed plight than prosecute the meanest or the best for these contempts. Aside, why thus it shall become high-witted Tamara to close with all. But, Titus, I have touched thee to the quick. Thy life blood out, if Aaron now be wise, then is all safe, and anchor in the port. Enter Clown. Ah, how now, good fellow, wouldst thou speak with us? Yea, forsooth, and your mistress be imperial. Empress I am, but yonder sits the emperor. Ah, oh, tis he, God and St. Stephen, give you good evening. I have brought you a letter and a couple of pigeons here. Saturninus reads the letter. Go take him away and hang him presently. How much money must I have? Come, sirrah, you must be hanged. Hanged? But the lady, then I've brought up a neck to a fair end. Exit with attendant. Despiteful and intolerable wrongs. Shall I endure this monstrous villainy? I know from whence this same device proceeds. Must this be born? As if his traitorous sons that died by law for murder of our brother have by my means been butchered wrongfully. Go, drag the villain hither by the hair. Nor age nor honour shall shape privilege. For this proud mock I'll be thy slaughterman sly, frantic wretch that hopes to make me great in hope thyself should govern Rome and me. Enter Amelius, a messenger. What news with thee, Amelius? Ah, oh, my lords, Rome never had more cause. The Goths have gathered head and with the power of high resolve in men bent to the spoil they hither march amain under conduct of Lucius, son to old Andronicus, who frets in course of this revenge to do as much as ever Coriolanus did. Is warlike Lucius, general of the Goths? These tidings rip me, and I hang my head as flowers with frost, or grass beat down with storms. I now begins our sorrows to approach. Tis he the common people love so much. Myself have often heard them say, when I've walked like a private man, that Lucius' banishment was wrongfully, and they have wished that Lucius was their emperor. Why should you fear? Is not your city strong? I but the citizens favour Lucius, and will revolt from me to succour him. King, be thy thoughts imperious like thy name. Is the sun dim that gnats do fly in it? The eagle suffers little birds to sing, and is not careful what they mean thereby, knowing that with the shadow of his wings he can at pleasure stint their melody. Even so mayst thou, the giddy men of Rome, and cheer thy spirit, for know thou, emperor, I will enchant the old Andronicus with words more sweet and yet more dangerous than baits to fish or honey stalks to sheep, when as the one is wounded with the bait, the other rotted with delicious feed. But he will not entreat his son for us. If Tamara entreat him, then he will. For I can smooth and fill his aged ears with golden promises that were his heart almost impregnable, his old ears deaf, yet should both ear and heart obey my tongue. Go thou before to our ambassador, say that the emperor requests a parley of warlike Lucius, and appoint the meeting even at his father's house, the old Andronicus. Amelius, do this message honourably, and if he stand on hostage for his safety, bid him demand what pledge will please him best. Your bidding shall I do effectually. Now will I to that old Andronicus, and temper him with all the art I have to pluck proud Lucius from the warlike Goths. And now, sweet emperor, be blithe again, and bury all thy fear in my devices. Well, then go incessantly, and plead to him. Exeunt, severally. And that is the end of Act 4. Act 3, with me shouting a lot, is there, and Act 5, when it's done, will go up there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all doing tremendously. Goodbye.